There are several different settings available on your Studio Live Series 3 mixer to help you set up the mixer in the way that you want to work. Let's dig into the general settings. To access your settings, press the Home button. Here, you can dig deeper into specific areas. Let's start with your system screen. Here you'll see your sample rate, an option to show the peak hold of your meters, an option to change the brightness of your LED meters and buttons, and the backlight on your touchscreen and scribble strips. You also have access to your permissions, user button assignments, fat channel load and paste settings, firmware, link augs mutes, and your Bluetooth regulatory information. Let's take a look at each. In your permission screen, you'll be able to set up permissions for various devices connected to your mixer. We have a separate video dedicated to setting up permissions for UC Surface and QMix devices. Be sure to check out that video for details on setting up permissions. Next is your user button assignments. This is where you can change the assignments of your user buttons between mute groups, tap tempo, quick scenes, and scene navigation. Full details on how to use these user function buttons for mute groups, quick scenes, and scene navigation is in our scene and presets video. Check out that training video for details on these user buttons. Next, we have the fat channel load and paste presets. Like the permissions and user function buttons, we have a separate video that digs in deep to the presets that covers how to use these filters. Next is your firmware screen, which will show you your mixer model number, firmware version, the date the firmware was created, and your serial number. This is also where you can do updates. The link augs mutes allow you to choose the options for how you want your augs mutes to work. There are four different settings for linking your augs mutes on the Series 3 mixers. First, there's unlinked. In this mode, your mutes from your main mix and all of your AUGS mixes are not linked and work completely independently on the channel you're muting. If you mute a channel in an AUGS mix, it won't mute it in any of the other AUGS mixes or in the main mix. In all AUGS mute link, when you mute a channel in the main mix, it won't mute in the AUGSes. And if you mute a channel in one AUX, it will mute that channel in all AUGS mixes but not the main mix. And finally, global mute link. In global mute link, if you mute a channel one place, it mutes it everywhere. Mute it in an AUGS mix, it'll mute it in all AUGS mixes and the main. Mute it in the main, and it'll mute it on all AUGS mixes as well. Last on this page is our Bluetooth regulatory information. This is really just something we have to have in there for legal purposes. If you get bored at a gig, maybe you pull it up and kill five minutes. Back on the home screen, we also have a global lockout. Pressing this will lock out the mixer so no changes will affect your mix. To exit global lockout, enter in the passcode 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Next on the home screen is our audio routing. This is where you can set up the stereo mix sends for your AES output, your USB output, and your SD card send. You can also set up your 16 assignable AVB send and return channels here. With the AVB, you have a total of 56 channels being sent and returned. The first are all fixed from the input channels of the mixer, but the last 16 can be flexibly routed from any of your mix sends. Let's take a look at how this works. When you select the network sends and returns, you'll have a sends and a return screen. On the sends screen, you have a list of your destinations and your sources. You can choose the destination, AVB send 42, to come from any of your mixes. On the return screen, you also have destinations and sources, with the destinations being the mixes on your mixer. Back on the routing screen, you can also set your options for your SD card, AES output, and USB. By default, each of these will come from the main left-right mix, but you can change it from any mix available on the Series 3 mixer. The next option in the home screen is your TalkBack Edit. 
Here is where you can choose your source between analog or AVB, the level of your talkback input, and the destinations that the talkback will be routed to. The capture screen is the same as opening the edit view on the live recording section. Since I have an SD card inserted and a session loaded, it brings up that session screen. If I didn't have a session loaded or an SD card inserted, I'd get the standard live recording screen. Finally, we have the utilities screen. Here, we have different test modes for the mixer. You can turn on your scribble strips to test them all, your master control screen, all buttons, only the RGB buttons, and Mardi Gras mode. Most of these utilities are for the factory or support to use in testing and troubleshooting the mixer. But also, because we're from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and it is Mardi Gras season, instead of a Vegas mode, you get Mardi Gras mode. In addition to the settings that you can find on the home screen, we also have some settings for your solo, monitors, and tape settings. Let's take a look at each. In your tape settings, you can choose the tape source from analog and Bluetooth, or network, USB, or SD card. You'll also see all your paired devices for the Bluetooth. You can also choose to forget the paired devices. So if you happen to have a band member whose device was paired over Bluetooth, you can prevent them from performing any unwanted shenanigans at your next show by choosing to forget their device, preventing them from playing back music when you don't want it to be played. Next, we'll take a look at the monitors. Here, you can set up your phone and monitor source, as well as the delay for both your phones and monitor. Having a delay for your phones and monitor comes in really handy when you've got a front of house position that's located far away from the actual PA system. This allows you to time align the sound so you'll hear it in your local monitoring at the same time the actual audio arrives to front of house from the front of house PA system. And finally, we have our solo settings. Here, you can choose your solo mode between latch, radio, and control room. In control room mode, the mixer will work similar to a recording console in that if no channels are soloed, the source will come from your main mix. But as soon as you solo a channel, it'll change to the solo bus. We also have options for solo in place. When in solo in place, soloing a channel will mute all other channels, similar to a recording console. Be careful, this is not a setting you want to use when doing a live mix. We also have solo selects, which when activated will select the channel you're currently soloing. And we have pre-fader listen, which will change the solo mode from after fader listen to pre-fader listen. That covers all of the general settings on the mixer. We hope you learned something and enjoyed the video. Check out the rest of our Studio Live Series 3 videos to learn all about this awesome new mixer.